Hello. In this video, I am going to show you how to do a typical installation of Exchange Server 2010. So let's get started. We're going to verify that our DVD-ROM drive has the Exchange 2010 SP1 media, and it does. CD drive D colon Exchange 2010 SP1. We'll click it, and then we'll locate setup.exe and double click setup.exe. This is going to launch a wizard and you can see that in the install we've done step one which is installing the .NET framework and we've completed step two which is installing Windows PowerShell version two. They're grayed out. We now need to do step three which is choosing the exchange language and we're going to choose only languages from the DVD. And then we'll click on step four which starts the installation process of Exchange 2010. This is going to take a little bit of time to get going, so I'm going to fast forward. You'll be able to see what's happening, it's just going to go a little faster than it would in real time. Alright, you'll see that the wizard is present and we start with an introduction screen. We're going to click next to continue. Then we have to agree to the terms of the license agreement, so put the bullet in I accept the terms and click next. From here we have to opt in or opt out from the error reporting process that Microsoft has included with Exchange 2010. This installation is for demonstration reasons only, so we're going to leave the bullet in no for error reporting and click next. We're then going to check typical exchange which installs the hub transport server, the client access server, the mailbox server, and the exchange management tools into the default location of c colon slash program files slash Microsoft slash exchange server slash v14. If we wanted to change that we could click browse and it's recommended in a real installation to put your exchange server somewhere other than the C drive. So we will click next to continue and now we have to identify if we are going to have client computers running Outlook 2003 in your organization. That's likely so I'm going to click on yes and then we'll click next. And now we have to identify if the client access server role will be interfacing. This is also likely because what this means is Will there be mobile phones connecting to this particular server from the internet or will other clients be connecting from the internet? And that's likely in today's day and age. So we have to put the fully qualified domain name in of how this server is going to be listed on the internet. So I'm going to call it mail.bkmail.local. I understand .local is not valid on the internet, but this is a demonstration. We'll click on next. And now we have to identify if we want to participate in the Customer Experience Improvement Program. And because this is only a demonstration, I don't want to join the program at this time. We'll click on Next, and then Exchange launches the readiness checks. This could take a little bit of time, so I'm going to fast forward this process for you to save a little time. So our installation readiness check has completed and now we can click on the install button to launch the exchange installation process. This is also potentially going to take a little bit of time so I'm going to fast forward this to save you some time.
All right, you'll see that the installation has completed successfully and we now need to click the finish button. So we'll click on start and then restart. And this concludes my presentation on how to install Exchange 2010 on a typical installation. Please check back for additional configuration tips. This is BrickHouseLabs.com and thank you for watching.